10 miles per hour, 11, 12, 14. Today I have a Swag John Swagger 5 electric scooter and in my previous video I was able to repair this battery pack which is a 36 volt battery pack and it seems to work fine now it's been working fine for the last couple of weeks it does have another problem which is the problem with the power button so here is the front panel with a broken power button so this square right here it used to be the power button and when I was trying to remove this power button I also peel off the top part of the board because the power button here is just soldered onto this board it's just surface mount board it's not a through hole so when I was trying to pull it off it also peels off the top part of the board so there's no way for me to solder the leg onto the surface anymore so this part here is completely ruined and this is the new power button I was trying to solder onto the top part here but I can't now so now I cannot turn on the scooter without this power button and I tried to look all over the internet to see if anybody would sell this part here but nobody is selling it and if somebody is selling this it probably costs an arm and a leg so thought to myself I have to get rid of this and in the process I'm just gonna upgrade with a new controller so my scooter can go faster and I don't have to deal with this anymore so in this video I'm gonna show you how to upgrade with a new controller and probably it will go faster and also a new throttle control and in the process I'm also gonna show you the wiring inside this scooter and how it works so here's a new controller it's ready to run between 36 and 48 volts and as usual the labels are all in Chinese except this is my writing the only problem I have is the size of this controller it's about twice the size of the original Swagtron scooter so I'm not sure how this is gonna fit in there I tried and it would barely fit inside the uh, casing of this scooter all right so I've been testing with the new controller just to make sure that it works fine before I put it in and before I go any further let me show you how all of these cables are connected together so first I got a cable from the hub motor which is from the other side of this wheel and it goes through here and go down in here and it has a three pin power cable for the wheel and five pin hall sensor cable which you connect to the controller there is another cable that has two connectors that connects to the controller the three pin cable is the throttle cable that goes up here and up the uh, front panel and it connects to the front panel via this cable and then it goes to the front panel and output by this connector and this will go to the connector of the throttle control the other four pin connector it goes from the controller through this cable and then up the same way and will connect to this cable here on the front panel and this is the front panel control cable this three pin cable that goes from the controller go to this cable here and all the way to the back wheel and that is the LED light for the rear LED light this connector here is the brake cable that goes from the brake on the handlebar and goes through the handlebar and it's connected to this cable here that goes to the front panel so here is the new controller I am going to replace it's rated at 350 watts and at between 36 and 48 volts and this is going to solve a few problems number one is most important is I don't need this front panel anymore 
and number two because it's rated at higher wattage hopefully I can go faster with this controller and number three because it's rated at a higher voltage hopefully in the future I can upgrade with a higher voltage battery so I can go even faster this controller is a very basic controller it doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles but I don't need any of those so connecting this controller is extremely easy I only need to connect basically four cables number one is a power cable which is this cable three phase power cable that goes to the brushless hub motor next is a five pin hole sensor cable which also goes to this hub motor the third cable is the throttle cable that goes to my throttle control and the last cable here is the brake cable black and blue and it goes straight up to the brake cable on the handlebar and because I got rid of the front panel I don't have a way to monitor my battery state of charge anymore so I'm gonna use a throttle control that has a voltage display right on it so that I can monitor my battery so let me show you how I connect all these power cables together in order to turn on the controller this connector is from is originally from this controller I cut it out and I soldered my XT60 connector so I, I can connect to the battery and on this connector it has three wires the two bigger wires are the power cable there is a smaller wire that is this for this switch so when this wire is connected to the main power line the controller will turn on so the switch wire is this wire right here on the throttle control it has a cable that has four small wires three wires will go to the throttle control the fourth wire is a yellow wire and that will go to the main positive of the battery so I connect the yellow wire from the throttle control to the red wire which is the third smaller wire on the uh, connector here so these two wires will go together and go to one end of the switch which is the left side the alligator clip here and the other cable is the main positive line from the battery so I just uh, tap a little wire here that comes out from the main positive line and it is a so smaller gauge wire because it is not a current carrying cable so it goes to the other side of the switch so when I press on here the system will turn on and the display will also turn on so let's give it a try here connect the battery to the controller it's a big spark every time now let's turn on the switch boom we are on you can see here the battery voltage 41.7 volts so battery is full so the first time when you plug in this controller when you try and turn it on it will turn on but if you try the throttle and move the throttle uh, nothing will happen but don't panic yet because there's one thing you have to do before you use the controller and that is to program the controller to make sure that the wheel will spin correctly forward and not backward so on the controller there are a couple of white wires and these are called the learning wires and um, because is it new it doesn't know whether the wheel is turning forward or backward so it has to learn first before it can actually work for you so in order to program this you just have to plug it in when you plug this cable in the wheel will spin right away so make sure that your wheel is freely and not touching anything otherwise there will be a big surprise so when you plug it in the wheel will spin and make sure that the wheel will spin forward and if it spins backward you just have to unplug it and plug it back in again and the wheel will spin the other way around and it will spin forward and then you just unplug it and that's it alright so let's try this 
that's backward okay so I'm just going to unplug it okay wait for it to stop and plug it back in now it's going forward I'm just going to unplug it and now that's it it's already programmed so now if I use my throttle it'll go forward there we go it's working great I'm curious to see what kind of speed I get out of this new controller. So I got my tachometer here. And let's see how fast we can go. Here we go. Nine hundred and seventy RPM. Let's double check. 970.8 RPM and it's calculated to be about 37 km per hour or 23 miles per hour that's very promising and of course this is the no load speed so when my donkey is on the scooter it will be a little bit slower than this now I just need to put everything back together and we'll be good to go alright I'm trying to install the controller in this housing here and I'm having a problem this connector here is taking too much space inside so I don't have enough room to put my controller in this controller barely fit in here so this connector has to go and instead I'm gonna try and use a different connector so over here I have a different charger for another scooter but it has a smaller connector but I don't have a female connector for this so I'm gonna salvage the female connector from an old modem so this connector would fit in here just fine so that means I won't be able to use the original charger with this kind of connector anymore this charger works just fine as long as it puts out the same voltage 42 volts and it, it will charge the battery just fine even though this one has a higher current I think this is two and a half amp versus one and a half amp so that means I can even charge the battery even faster with this new charger let me show you how I mount this connector on here so I cut out a piece of the board where this connector was mounted onto here so I cut into a round piece and this fit just perfectly inside this round hole here and I'm gonna put some super glue in here and then I put this connector on hammer it down it's very tight and then I'm gonna solder it back on and it will look like this and this is what it looks like on the other side now it stays flat with the surface and it doesn't stick out anymore now I can solder my wire in here so here's what it looks like and now I can plug it in this connector and I can charge my battery in order to insulate this I just need to use some hot glue just like that and just to be sure I put on another layer of insulator now we'll take a look from this side it is almost completely flat it's a huge difference compared to the previous connector now my controller will fit in here just fine nothing is touching and to insulate the connector on this side I cut a piece of plastic straw and now just put some hot glue on now it is well protected from the elements let's plug it in and charge it and see if it works I got a kilowatt meter here the LED now is green plug it in turn red so it's charging and we are charging at about 58 watts my next step is to install a power switch and I was thinking about drilling another hole and install my switch right here but there is no more room inside for this switch anymore so I'm gonna have to install this switch right on top of the handlebar 
right on this plastic panel right here. And that means I have to run the wires all the way from the controller up all the way to the handlebar. I'm thinking of reusing the existing cable. So this is the main cable that runs from the controller through this tube all the way up to the handlebar. The problem is this cable it has seven small wires and I need eight, right? So two for the power switch, uh, two more for the brake and four more for the throttle control. So a total of eight. This only has seven. So I cannot use this cable anymore. So I have to remove this cable and instead I'm going to put in a computer network cable. So this is also called the CAT5 cable. Inside this cable there are eight small wires. So it's going to be perfect for this. So here we go. Go through here. Up and out this way. And because this cable is smaller than the original uh, cable, it goes through the rubber grommet just fine. Took me less than five minutes. All right, I am finally done. Let me show you what I've done here. So I've got the three-phase power cable and five-pin hole sensor cable that goes to the motor. These three wires are the throttle control cable. It goes to the network cable up to the front up to my throttle this is the main positive wire from the battery and that's going to uh, the top to the switch and this is the switch wire that goes to the switch also these two wires are the brake wire goes to the network cable all the way up to the brake line I also drill a hole on this plastic cover and install my switch so I can turn on and off the system. Now we can just put the cover back on. And let's try and see if it works. Works great. Let's try the brake and see if it works. So Press down and brake. Power cuts off. Release the brake. Turn back on. That's good. It's working. All right. I'm done installing the controller in here, and here's what it looks like. All nice and neat in there. Beautiful. Here's what it looks like on the handlebar. All right. Here we go. Forty-one point one volt. Whoa, whoa, huh, accelerate fast. 10 mile per hour, 12. Thirteen, 14, 15. Woo! Come out, come out. 16, there we go. So as you can see from the test drive, I was only able to get it up to about 16 miles per hour, which is about the same as the old controller. But the acceleration is phenomenal. The acceleration is a lot faster than the old controller. I think that's because the new controller will allow more current to go to the motor and it can accelerate faster. But because the motor winding only allows it to go so fast, F36 volts so I think I'm reaching the upper limit of this controller so in order to go faster I'm gonna need to upgrade the battery pack to a higher voltage which will be possible because this controller will support up to 48 volts and that's what I'm gonna do next in the next video alright that's all for now thanks for watching I'll see you next time